With over two million people fleeing their homes and becoming refugees, Ukraine's humanitarian crisis has reached new heights. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, this emergency is the fastest growing refugee influx since World War II, necessitating an immediate response from neighboring countries such as Poland, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, and Moldova, which are now hosting a large number of these refugees within their borders. While there is always a serious danger of human trafficking, certain age groups such as infants, children, young mothers, and the elderly are more vulnerable than others. Fleeing for their lives with only a small suitcase, they arrive at the border crossing in shock with no idea of where they will go or what they will do next. With the largest humanitarian footprint in Ukraine and at the border crossings, ADRA's emergency response teams are working tirelessly to provide food, water, shelter, mental health support and counseling, warm clothing, non-food items, translation services, transit assistance, and cash assistance to those in greatest need. With the amazing connection that we have through our partnership with the Adventist Church Network in Eastern Europe, ADRA is uniquely positioned to provide immediate assistance in the way of shelter and food in church facilities, as well as the homes of church members. Church members throughout all of these bordering countries are stepping up to become ADRA volunteers to help with the many needs that people have. And yet the needs are great. The crisis only continues to grow. For the Ukrainian people, every day is a struggle to survive in the face of freezing temperatures, power outages, and food and water shortages. While it's natural for us to feel helpless in these circumstances, I am asking that you respond with love in the face of such calculated and cruel aggression. Churches and the private sector in particular have continued to raise funds and raise awareness for address work in Ukraine and its neighboring countries. What will your church group or workplace do? Today and tomorrow, your ongoing support will enable ADRA to assist even more people in need. Your contribution will make a significant difference in the lives of those in need. As Executive Director of ADRA Canada, I would like to express my gratitude for your continued support. Many thanks and may God bless you all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to Edmonton South this morning. Welcome to those joining us online as well. If you're here for the first time, a special welcome to you. We're seeing some new faces, but some returning faces. And all of you are just as welcome on this special Sabbath day. We want to uh, bring your attention to a couple of announcements, and then we'll pray together as we continue. Uh, we do have a first reading of some transfers out of memberships to other churches. So if you uh, would refer to these in your bulletin, I'll just read the names for you here. There's Luz Edna Barrio to the Duke SDA Church, Wilson Manzo Vargas to the Duke SDA Church, Alex Anuscu to Parkland SDA Church, Sophia Anuscu to Parkland SDA Church, and Tanya Anuscova to Parkland SDA Church as well. And so this is the first reading, so we'll have a second reading next Sabbath. Um, Hope Lutheran Church, our neighbor church just next to us here, has asked that we not use their parking lot today um, or next Sabbath. Next Sabbath, there's a funeral happening at their church, and they'll need full access to their parking lot. So if you could be aware of that and make different arrangements for parking next week, that would be wonderful. And if you've mistakenly parked in their parking lot today, if you could move your vehicle, that would be appreciated. We'd also like to remind you of Coralwood Adventist Academy's annual general meeting that's happening on Sunday, May 15, by Zoom at 10 a.m. And so if you're a delegate that's been chosen from our church, um, if you're somebody who's just interested in attending that meeting as well, then please feel free to do that 
on the 15th and be aware of the time. As you've seen, um, ADRA is asking for our support at this time, and so if you're able to give uh, to support ADRA's work, then please do. Um, if you need extra information on that, Rosa is our contact here. Rosa and Brian as well can also help to supply some in information additional to what you've seen on the video here. Each year um, when we look to celebrating Mother's Day, Father's Day, we're aware that there those of us in our congregation who, for this weekend and Father's Day in June, this is a not always a moment that's full of just joyful memories. It can bring up some moments of, of pain, reflection, of missing people as well. Um, we do want to be aware that um, those of you who are celebrating today Mother's Day as mothers yourselves may also be missing your mothers, missing children, um, those who've had to bury children, those who have buried their own mothers, we also want to be aware of that and support you through that and know that you are so very loved and God is right by you. No matter what this weekend represents for you, he sees and he knows and he's with you. And um, Psalm 18 is a psalm that's attributed to David. And David, we know, is a man of war. Uh, we don't often hear... I don't know that I've heard anything about David's mother. So that's not the connection here. The connection, though, would be that David, in his writing, often referenced God taking care of him and preparing him for difficult situations. And he talks about rough terrain often and his feet being planted securely. And in Psalm 18, verses 1, to, one and 2, he says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And then in verse 31, he continues by writing, For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. Verse 36, you provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. And this is a God who, no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, secures our feet and secures our path and is a God who cares for us in all of the love that he is and who he is to us. And so this is a God we're here to worship together today. And we ask that you bow your heads with me as we continue. God, we know that you have given us so much, that you have provided for us people who love and care for us in so many different ways. Today we're celebrating mothers in a particular way, those who've been mothers to their own children, to other people's children that have been stand-in mothers, who stood in the place of mothers, who have been those who've represented a place of refuge in many ways. God, we know that there are many who are thinking of loss today and this weekend, and we ask that you will gather them close to you, and that this day will still be a day of celebration because we are celebrating the love that you have given to us as humans that you have placed in our hearts. And we celebrate the great gift that you are together. In your name I pray, amen. Good morning, church family. Good morning. I hope you all have had a blessed week this week and happy early Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Um, I know I'm not Lucille sitting at the piano today. You may have noticed I'm covering for her, so please bear with me. Um, our first song this morning is going to be The Old Rugged Cross, which is uh, a personal favorite and classic of mine growing up. And me and the team, we were talking about it, and we realized that our church doesn't often sing this song for praise and worship. And we need to change that because this is a very, very inspiring song. So please join us as we sing The Old Rugged Cross.
offering will be collected during this next song, and please don't forget that you can also uh, pay online as well. Join us as we sing, Came to My Rescue. Lord, 
Father God, we do indeed call out to you when we realize just how much we are in need of you. And God, we ask that that call, that that reminder of our need of you will never end. In this Sabbath day, in these Sabbath hours, we recognize our need of rest. And we thank you for providing a way for that to happen. We thank you for providing this space for us to gather in. We do not want to take these things for granted. We know they are good gifts from you. And we thank you. In this day where we honor mothers, those who have been mothers to us, who have indeed embodied characteristics of yours, we're thankful for those special people in our lives that have been mothers to us. No matter in what capacity they have lived out that role, we thank you for them answering that call to follow you through that. Even if they didn't realize they were following you to do that, we thank you that they have been willing to serve in that capacity. We thank you for the love, for the support, for the cheerleading that our mothers offer. And we want to especially pray for those who are, are struggling this weekend with all that it entails, that you truly will gather them to your heart, that in a special way they will feel renewed in their recognition of your love for them, that you will continue that healing process that each of us are in, and God, that you will provide a special measure of comfort and of peace for each one. God, we think of many people in our congregation who are reaching out to you for different needs today. There are physical needs, health needs, financial needs, mental health needs. Some are needs for restored relationships. Some are needs for being able to take that next step in a relationship with you. God, we've got many people on our prayer list in our bulletin and people who aren't mentioned there yet, but who have a desire for you to move in a particular way in their life. And God, we know that you desire good things for us. And sometimes we don't know exactly what those look like, but you do. And we pray that you will reveal yourself to each person that we are praying for, that you will be a significant presence in their life and their heart, that they will be assured of the way that you are working and that you indeed are still for them, no matter what circumstance they find themselves in right now, that they have an assurance of your salvation and of your love and of your guidance, because you are a good, good God, and we thank you for that. God, we ask that in all that we do today, in all that we hear and all that we participate in, that we will bring glory to you. We ask that you be with Pastor John and with Marilyn as they bring a special word from you today. And that this will be a time when we really are able to recognize the call that you have for each one of us to shine for you in our community, in our immediate families, but also in our church family and in our community, that we will be the light that you desire us to be. God, we thank you and we love you. In your name I pray. Amen. and girls. Today my story is about a boy and an alligator. There, a long time ago in Africa lived a boy and he had a master and he really loved lemons. And 
there was a lemon tree and the master owned the lemon tree and one day he was doing his duties and he went on a walk and he saw the lemon tree and he really wanted the lemon tree, the, some lemons. And when he was walking, he was gonna touch it and then the master said that he had to go to do his duties. So when he finished his duties, he was, had to do one more. So when he finished that one, he was daydreaming about having a lemon. He was daydreaming that the master took a lemon off the tree and cut it with his hunting knife and gave some to him. And he was drinking with the juice. And he really liked the juice because he really loved lemons. And he, one day when he was walking, it was a hot day and he wanted a lemon, but he couldn't have it because his master said that he wasn't allowed. And <coughs> the water did not soothe his throat. So that night, when, they, when it was supper time, um, a thought, an evil thought came in his head and he went to go see if the master was eating. And he was eating and he got one lemon and he cut it and he liked it. And then he got more and went into a hiding spot where nobody would find him, that he knew where it was, near the house. And when he went to it and he was eating all the lemons, when he finished, some of it didn't go in his mouth. It went on his cheeks and his hands. So he was gonna get in trouble if he went back looking like that. So he went to the lake and he was looking for crocodiles and there was none, just an old dog. And he went to wash off and he said, ow, because there was actually a crocodile there. It was the log, and it bit his thigh and his tummy, and it was taking him to an island to, because the crocodile needed something to eat, and he was screaming for help, and the crocodile didn't like it, so he went under the water and tried to stop him, and there was cuts and bruises on him because of his paws, and it was on him, and he was still going to the island and then soon later after the supper was done three boys that was his friends went to go look for him and he was still screaming help help and when he was in the water one of the boys was telling the other ones do you hear that and they were listening closely and they actually heard the help. And so one boy looked over the field and saw him. So they ran and jumped into a canoe and they were paddling all the way to the crocodile. And they were hitting him with sticks and stones and their paddles. And they were hitting them with it. And they, and then finally the crocodile let go. And when he let go, they put him in the canoe and they went back. Who knows how many teeth a crocodile has? Anyone? 105. No, 50 teeth. Do you know how long a crocodile can open its eyes for? Hmm? You? Seven minutes, yeah. And they told the master what happened, and when the master found out, he never punished him because he 
the master thought that he got a, a punishment already because of the crocodile, the alligator. <laughs> yeah, the crocodile. And when he, and he had scratches and he had bruises and he had teeth marks on him and they took him to a hospital to get better and he got better and now he's better right now. And I don't know if he's alive right now, but yeah. <laughs> and my story shows not to be tempted by Satan and to listen to your parents. Amen. Let's pray. <laughs> Dear Jesus, please help us not to be tempted and please help us to listen to our parents when they tell us to. And please let us be kind and please don't let us like do what this boy did but not like get hurt by a crocodile amen Say, take one, and then smack it down. Action! What did your mom talk about a lot? Mostly stuff that I cannot question and I don't know about. Reading. She's trying to get me into reading, I just don't get it. Taxes. She doesn't talk about the stuff she always sings. She always sings about Beyonce. What's something your mom's always telling you? Stop talking about the iPad. No iPad. <laughs> Go brush your teeth. How does she know you didn't brush your teeth? <laughs> she just knows. I can't. You can't remember? Oh, no, I can't. Oh, that's OK. Clean my room. Is your room get kind of dirty? Kind of. Kind of? Kind of. Would your mom say it's kind of dirty, or would your mom say, this is dirty? Kind of. Are you getting tired of my questions? Kind of. Kind of? <laughs> does she sing, like, worship music? It's only my dad who sings. Worship music. So your dad sings worship music and your mom sings Beyonce. Yeah. If your mom was a superhero, what would her superpowers be? Best, so she can just get the laundry done because we always have so much laundry. So much laundry. Why would she need super speed, you think? So she wouldn't be late anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> Making people's ear hurt because how loud she sings. She'd just go, and it would just stop the crime. What does she do at work? She looks at people, or? She looks at people? Well. That kind of sounds like Facebook. <laughs> no, usually it's just messaging. Just messaging, just more, messaging. More, me messaging. more and more messages, messaging. just constantly. So how does your mom know that you love her? I tell her that. You tell her that? Yeah. Do you guys say it at the same time like you just did then? Or no. no. Um, I give her hugs. We, we play outside and we ride our scooters and bikes. How do you know that mom loves you? She does kind of stuff. Yeah. For me, she does my hair pretty and, and she always, always sings to me. She cooks really good chicken, spaghetti. She gives us hugs. Mom hugs are the best, aren't they? She says, you know what? And I say, you love me. And she's like, how do you know that? Because I, because you always say it. Yeah, she always says it because she loves me. She's kind to me and my brother. She's kind to her whole family. Why is your mom the best mom in the world, do you think? The only reason is because it's my mom. You love her just because she's mom? Mm hmm I love that. Awesome. Do you have any questions about my mom? No. Not interested at all in my, about my mom? Nope. Okay. Fair enough. Good job. Well, good morning. I have a helper today. We won't be here till 1230. <laughs> 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 it's 
stuck for words. Let's have our closing prayer, shall we? <laughs> we are, uh, we're delighted to be here with you. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is my wife, Marilyn, and uh, we've been married for 34 years. And, and we have two boys, and um, we'll show you uh, uh, some pictures a little bit later here of them. But um, we have been married 34 years, and both of our kids are grown up and out of home. So we're empty nesters right now. We have two grandchildren, uh, and we'll soon have a third in another month, right? And um, we have one grandchild who, who died um, just prior to uh, the uh, pregnancy coming to uh, the ninth month. And so um, we, we understand that for Mother's Day, it brings a lot of emotions for a lot of different people. Uh, we have to recognize that uh, there are people who are here today uh, who recently lost their mothers, and this is the first Mother's Day that mom has been gone, and it, it's, it's really hard. And there are some of you here who have lost your mothers many, many, many years ago, and it's still difficult because that's the power that mothers have um, on our lives. And there are individuals in our congregation who are away from mom. Mom is so far removed uh, from us that we can't physically visit, and so we'd love to have them close and give them a hug. Um, we also recognize that there are some who are, you know, um, have lost children uh, prior to uh, uh, them actually uh, coming to term. And, uh, and so, um, you know, that's difficult. And there are individuals who are here today and watching online who have buried their children. And that's no fun. That's no fun at all. And so we recognize that Mother's Day can be a very, very difficult uh, experience uh, for some, and we all experience it a little differently. Um, today, we'd like you to pray with us before we begin. And as Marilyn said, uh, we won't be going over time today, all right? <laughs> Father, thank you so much for your love and for your grace and for your mercy. Um, we thank you for all of our mothers. And today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we pause to reflect upon the qualities of moms. We pray that your spirit would be with us. Bless the preachers today, plural, as we share. And would your spirit go out from us to those who are listening. May the words of advice and counsel that we provide today, may it be an encouragement to those young mothers who are present or who are watching by way of live stream, and a reminder to all of us who are older uh, to d keep on doing the right things. Bless us to this end, O oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to begin by talking a little bit about uh, Marilyn's mom this morning. Uh, we want to you to know that Marilyn's mom passed away, what is it, five years Six ago? Years Six years ago. Six years ago in October. Coming. Tell us a little bit about your mom. Mom was a very loving mother. Um, she showed us, she showed us love, gave us love, and she always told us. She'd say, "You know, Mom loves you." Mm. Always, and mm. uh, she was always uh, looking out for the needy. If someone wanted the shirt off her back, she actually did give it to somebody a couple of times. She right. took it off, washed it, and gave it to them. Right. Um, Your mom was involved a lot in uh, community services, mm -hmm. uh, faithfully yes. involved in that, right? You know, uh, Did that make an impression on you growing up? Yes, uh, it did. I remember even to the, if someone needed food, mom always was there to give them right. almost the food out of her mouth. Right. But there was a time I remember on our street, it was only a small street, everybody kind of knew everybody. But I remember one time this lady came down and knocked on her door and said, you know, do you have a little bit of firewood that I could have? 
Mm -hmm. And mom actually gave her a couple of armloads of wood to keep right. her house warm. Right. Yeah, and, and your mom got to come and visit us here a couple mm -hmm. of times when she was here. Yeah. She was the person who did not want us to leave Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. she, she wanted us to stay there, but, but we came out west and she got to come out and spend some time here. And, uh, and that, was, that was very special, very special indeed, right, you know? Anything else about your mom that... I just can't wait for heaven so I can see her. Yeah. I really can't wait. And I think that's the feeling of so many people who lose their moms. We can't wait for heaven to be able to see our loved ones again. And, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's what we call love. That, that feeling inside of us that's overwhelming. We, we want to see mom. So what about your mother? Well, my mother, her name is Shirley. And uh, she brought me into this world and reminds me that she can take me out of it, <laughs> right? And uh, my mom uh, was, the, uh, was the rock spiritually of the home. Um, you know, we prayed for my dad for 34 years or so before he uh, accepted Christ and, and now serves as a deacon in the local church. But, but my mom was the Stallworth. She was the one who uh, made uh, sure that everything was in place. She was the chief cook, the bottle washer. She never, ever worked outside of the home. Uh, always uh, worked uh, at home as a mom, a homemaker. And um, she was a disciplinarian. And, uh, you know, you, you, you never got away with anything with my mother. And uh, my mom is still living. She's 80 years of age. She'll be 81 her birthday. And, uh, you know, she, every day we talk on the telephone. And, uh, you know, we don't talk on the telephone every day. She's calling me because I'm either in an accident, I'm in the <laughs> hospital, or, you know, she's one of those type of people that feels that if she doesn't hear from you, there's something wrong. Um, so, in, in terms of growing up, uh, you know, there were, uh, there are six of us kids. There was a seventh that uh, passed away just uh, about, oh, I, I guess Roy would have been about 11 months old, I think, right? So, uh, I have a brother who I've never met, and I'm looking forward to heaven for that reason, to be able to see him. And uh, I don't think you can go through life and have something like that happen that it doesn't impact mm -hmm. you. And, and, and I know that, you know, my mom is, is always big about the family. She wants us always to be together. And, and so I appreciate her for that. And, uh, but, but a good woman, she preaches and, you know, she teaches Sabbath school and all that kind of stuff. And so, hey, mom, I know you're watching today. So <laughs> I made sure to only say good things about you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then there's another lady in our lives who's an important mother to us, and, and that's our daughter-in-law. You want to talk about Mary? Mary is a good mother. She's uh, awesome with the girls, and uh, she lets them do things so they can learn, like life skills and stuff. Yeah. She's just awesome. I, I've heard a lot of people talk about Mary in her younger days, and they're so surprised that she's turned out so well. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we love Mary, and uh, Mary's a great mom to, to our grandchildren. We, we appreciate them so much. And, and these are our two grandchildren, Kate and Emma. And uh, Kate is first uh, in kindergarten, finishing up. And uh, Emma is ready for university, even though she's two years younger or so, right? You know? And uh, we want to say good morning to them watching in Fort McMurray today. Uh, I want to share a passage of scripture with you today uh, because this is Mother's Day. and. I want to share this from uh, Proverbs chapter 31. Many of you are very familiar with this because it is a passage that's a go-to for Mother's Day. But I, I'm sharing this passage today from the Message Bible, okay? So let's just take a look at it. It's on the screen, or you can follow along in your Bible or your iPad or your iPhone at home, whatever you want to do. Um, in beginning with verse 10, we'll read as far as verse 31. It says, a good woman is hard to find. I'm glad I found you, right, <laughs> you know, and, and worth far more than diamonds. That's why she never has a diamond, right, you know. Uh, her husband trusts her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. And, you know, I've been married 34 years, honey, and I do it all over again, right. A good woman is never spiteful, 
She treats him generously all of her life. And she shops around for the best yarns and cottons and enjoys knitting and sewing. And I think here, you know, there's truth to that. And she does shop around. I keep telling her all the time, honey, listen, you're going to the grocery store. They have beans here. But she said, the beans down there are four cents cheaper. And I'm going, but you're going to spend 20 cents to go get the four cent beans. It doesn't make sense. And so, but that's my wife. And that's why I love her so. She's like a trading ship, the, uh, the Message Bible says, like a trading ship that sails to faraway places and brings back exotic surprises. Uh, my well. wife doesn't <laughs> sail on ships, but we have some exotic meals at home. She likes to look on the internet and she will get these recipes and she tests them out on me. <laughs> wow. She's up before dawn, preparing <laughs> breakfast for her family and organizing her day. And that's true. That is very true for you. She looks over a field and she buys it. And then with money she's put aside, she plants a garden. I have come to discover that if you want to save some money, you just say, Marilyn, we're going on a trip. And she starts squirreling away money. <laughs> One day, I had a purpose to go into her drawer. It was her underwear drawer. <laughs> and there's a fistful of money in there, a wad of it. And I said, where did you get this? I, I've saved it up, right, you know? <laughs> and, but that's, that's what my wife does. First thing in the morning, she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeves, and she's eager to get started. I, I think Sherwood Care, where she works, can attest that she's always early and she's ready to go. She senses the worth of her work and in a, it's in no hurry to call it quits for the day. I, I, I will say amen to that. She's skilled in the crafts of home and hearth and diligent in homemaking. Listen, she is my number one right here, okay? She's quick to assist anyone in need. She reaches out to the poor. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows. Her winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. She makes her own clothing, dresses in colorful linens and silks. She told me today that I had to wear this shirt and these pants because it matches her clothing, right? You know? <laughs> and, and, and so welcome to my world, right? <laughs> Her husband is greatly respected, and he deliberates with the city fathers. She designs gowns and sells them. No. She brings <laughs> sweaters. She knits to dress shops. Her clothes are well-made and elegant, and she always faces tomorrow with a smile. Um, when she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say. <laughs> <laughs> and she always says it kindly. This is my chance. <laughs> this is your chance. <laughs> She keeps an eye on everyone and everyone in her household. She keeps them busy and productive. I always have a to-do list, right, you know? <laughs> her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you have outclassed them all, says the Bible. And I think that's a great description of my wife. But you know what? This wasn't written about my wife. It was written about women who are godly women and that's you mm -hmm. right and that's her charm can mislead and beauty soon fades the woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of god give her everything she deserves adorn her life with praises the bible says right so we celebrate you moms today we thank you for being godly women, right? Now, we want to talk to you a little bit about what we call the great qualities in a mom. And this is really unscripted per se. Even though there are some notes in front of us, we're going to be reading and speaking off the cuff. But we want to talk about some first things first. And we're going to be tailoring these in relationship to moms because the very first thing that moms you need to understand is that you are role models mm -hmm. you are role models and and you are the first person that your child ever is going to know the first face 
that they're going to become acquainted with is going to be you, Mom. And they've been with you right from the get-go when their little life came into existence. It's been about you, Mom. And so first things first, you are a role model, and they are looking to you. So us being role models, of course, we need to live an exemplary life. And parents or kids learn from their parents. So. Right. So if you want them to say please and thank you. You have to teach them to say please and thank you. Have you have to teach have to do them. It yourself. That's right. And so I'm so glad you always say please and thank you, honey. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> you know, we have to show them how they need to behave as little kids, right? And I remember some of the struggles. We, we had two kids there. They are so opposite to one another. Our first boy, uh, Shane, was the quiet one. Um, he never said anything. He hardly ever cried. Uh, he never made any noises. I remember once we drove uh, from St. John's, Newfoundland to Moncton, New Brunswick, and he never said a word, never cried, never said anything. AJ was born four years later, and it was 13 months before he finally shut up, right? <laughs> he cried nonstop, day and night. And we actually put AJ in the hospital to get respite for her. And, and that's how bad he was in terms of that. He had um, ingrown toenails on every foot. Uh, he was lactose intolerant, and he just cried nonstop. We, we figured out a plan. Remember the plan yeah, we came up with? Yeah, I remember the plan. What we, did we do to help him stop crying? We taped the vacuum clean, uh, vacuum clean around both sides, Right. 90-minute tape. We took a cassette tape that was 90 minutes long. We put the vacuum cleaner in the room, and we recorded the vacuum cleaner playing. And then whenever AJ would cry, we would turn the cassette tape on, and it would make him be quiet, and he would go off to sleep. We wore the cassette tape out, all right? And then when he turned 13 months old, he, he, he gave all of that up. And, I and wanted to keep the tape for when he was a child, when he got a child, but he wore it out, so. Right, well, you can't, listen, moms, uh, you can't expect your children to be perfect. Um, but it is important for you to be a good role model. And it doesn't matter whether you're a brand new parent or whether you're in your 60s and your kids are in their 40s. You can still be a good role model for your kids, right? Like for instance, uh, I remember we lived in a little town called Springdale and I only had Shane and uh, I'd take him to the store and if he wanted something and I'd say, no, you can't, you can't have that today, my love. So he would take it from where we were and walk right over where he got it, put it back. And, mm -hmm. uh, and AJ did the same thing. But then I would hear some kids crying in the mall or whatever. And uh, I would just say, you know, if you did that, I would just walk right out with you, right? <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the second thing that we want to share with you is that a great quality in a mom is, is, is somebody who is, um, let's see here, a person of faith and then uh, a person who is patient, all right? And let's talk a little bit about patience for just a minute, right? Because learning to be patient when you have young children is something that's very difficult. Kids are always testing you. They're always testing the rules. They're always testing the boundaries that you've set. And they're seeing what they can get away with. And it can take them a while to understand that... Um, you know, they're not going to get over your time. And, and, and you so know. So even something as simple as feeding them and they're wasting it on the floor and you're constantly wiping up. Mary, do you hear me? And then constantly wiping up. They're dropping it on the floor. They're throwing their food. You just got to be patient and try and teach them that the way to do it is to keep it on their tray or they're going to make messes. But Right. Well, you've put up with me for 34 years throwing food on the floor. Yeah. So. How, how do you develop patience? Patience is a virtue. <laughs> and that's one thing that I lack. <laughs> right. So you, you, you struggle with but, patience. But I think I inherited it from my father and his mother. Right. 
Okay. All right. So some mom of it, was very patient. Yeah. Some of it is. Some of it is that way, right? You know, um, patience, moms and dads. Listen. Let's talk about church for a minute and patience, okay? Because people sometimes get uptight when they hear a child crying out in church. And 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 I want the parents to know that I would rather have children crying out in church mm -hmm. than have a dead silent church where there are no children. Amen. Amen. Moms, read my lips. Be patient with your children. Don't become exasperated with them because they're not perfect little angels in church. Okay? It's important for you to know. Um, what about a person who is supportive and loving? You want to talk a little about that? Well, it could be like maybe a child is just learning to potty train or whatever and they're making messes and whatever. You just got to try and, uh, you know, support them and tell them that it's okay, it's okay, we can keep trying and eventually they'll get it. Right. So, so no matter what the circumstances is, mom, listen, no matter what the circumstances are, we need to be loving towards our children and the children need to know that we are supportive of them, no matter what it is, right? Once they get to a certain age, your children will make their own decisions. And those decisions will be around church and attendance at church and all of these kind of things. We'd all like to have the perfect family where all of our children are, you know, next to God. But the reality of the situation is we don't have perfect families. We don't have perfect children but we still have to love and support them no matter what choices they make in life. I may not agree with what my son does in his spare time. I may not agree with the choices he made, but he is my son and I will love him forever. And they need our support. And from, they need our the support. They are so little tots to so them, remember that. even when they're adults. There's a problem that some of us have in that we cut off ties with our children because we don't like what they do. Mm -hmm. And you are damaging forever the relationship that you have with your children. So always be loving and always be supporting them. They need our help. They need our guidance. And, and, and right from a baby. Yep. Right from a baby, right through to adulthood. It doesn't change because guess what? Once a mom... Always a, mom. Always a mom. Remember that. Let's look at the next thing here. A person who practices and teaches his forgiveness. All right? Your children are going to make mistakes. Did ours make mistakes? Yes. All right? Can you think of some mistakes that our kids made? Well, <laughs> maybe they're listening. No. <laughs> What's that? AJ is listening? <laughs> well, let's talk about the time that uh, you and I went to the grocery store. And um, we are living in the church manse in St. John's. And the kids are playing hockey on the street. And um, AJ we did... <laughs> we get a phone call. And this is AJ on the phone. And he's called because he's, he's taken a slap shot with a hockey puck and he's put it through the pane glass of the front doors. A new door. <laughs> a brand new door that we had just installed. And, uh, you know, I want to tell you something. When those moments happen in your life, and they always will, there's two reactions that you can have. You can get upset and blow up, and it will be a traumatic experience for your children. Or you can be calm, and you can be gentle, and, and you, can, you can simply say, you know what, that's okay, I forgive you. They need and to be disciplined. They need to be disciplined, yes. But also, you need to show them forgiveness. Right, right. forgiveness works both ways, you see, uh, because the truth is, parents, moms, you make mistakes too. 
Nobody agreed with that statement? <laughs> Moms make mistakes too. So it works both ways, right? You know? And for little kids, it may just be a hug and a kiss just to reaffirm them that. And let me say this to you who are here today as parents. Do not be afraid to go to your child and say, I'm sorry, I did something that was wrong. Your kids will respect you for doing that, for acknowledging that you are less than perfect, because they all think moms are perfect. But when mom messes up, own up to it, acknowledge the mistake. You too, dads. No one is perfect. And the children need to learn that it's okay to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And that people should be forgiven when they make mistakes. It's not healthy to hold on to these negative type thoughts and ideas. A person who sets boundaries and rules. Wow. You want to talk about that? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> When we set rules for our kids, um, like I've known parents who said, okay, I'm counting to three. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> they know they can get off with it. Yeah. You need to, if you're gonna count to three and then discipline them for whatever they did, then yeah, you need I think, to. I think children really do need boundaries in order to be able to thrive properly. Mm -hmm. And so don't be afraid to set the boundaries for your children. But if you're going to be setting boundaries. You need to stick with the boundaries. And you, you need, need to, to stick with the boundaries. And they need to know what the consequences of going outside the boundaries are. Because then and they're then, confused. They don't know, yeah. well, she let me off with it this time. Right. And maybe I'll try a little bit. Yeah. And so we have to, you know, when it comes to discipline, let me talk to you about discipline just for a minute. Um, listen, if you tell your child that if they do something wrong, that they're going to be punished and they're going to be put in their room. In other words, time out. We used to call it way back in the 70s. Um, and, and if you're going to give them time out and you say, you do that and you're getting time out and they go and do it, Give them time out. Follow through mm -hmm. on what you said you would do. Because if you do not, they will grow up as children learning that they're always pushing yeah. and there's no consequences. And children need to learn early in life that there are consequences to the decisions that they make. And if they know what the boundaries are, they know what the rules are, and they know the punishment that's going to come to them when they break the rules, they will grow up to be disciplined themselves. But the punishment should fit the crime. Yes. Did you have a story there? Or? No, no. No? Okay. <laughs> Another quality that we believe very strongly in is that mothers are respectful and they teach respect. Now here's what I'm talking about. We have a lot of people today who have what I refer to as a potty mouth. You understand what I'm talking about? When I say a potty mouth, there's nothing but garbage coming out of it. Whenever they open their mouth, there's this word and that word, words that I choose not to repeat. And they're always, you know, uh, and a lot of this, I hate to put it this way, but a lot of it is in the music culture in which we live today because every song out there is filled with violence and filled with sex and filled with, you know, all kinds of words. And, and uh, moms, I'm just calling on you. We're calling on you as a pastoral couple to, to, to be a respectful woman. And, and somehow I don't envision a, a, a godly woman who's a member of the church, you know, going down to Walmart and, and having a dispute with the clerk, and the next thing that comes out of her mouth is a bunch of four-letter words. It's inappropriate. They need to learn respect and show respect. 
and, and, and that respect is something that's earned. Mm -hmm. It is earned. So we are, we are asking our moms and our congregation, those who are watching by way of live stream, teach our children to be respectful, but be respectful yourself. And respect is something that's earned. And, and so when we talk about this today, you know, respect is a two-sided street. The children seeing you being disrespectful, being loud and boisterous and using language that's inappropriate. And then you get surprised when your little boy or little girl starts uttering the same four-letter words that she's heard mom or dad utter. Mm -hmm. It's completely inappropriate. And is unbecoming of a godly woman. Let's go to the next one. A person who spends quality time. Do you want to talk about this? Because I've been away from home a lot. Uh, in, my, in my journey as a pastor, in my journey in social work and investigations, I was often away from home a lot. And ministry is a 24-7 job. And the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, I've had to learn to spend quality time. And that, that, that's hard for me. But the person who spends the most quality time with the kids is their mom. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Spending quality time with your kids, you could, uh, you could have a craft time, you could have a reading time, you could have a, go out in nature and uh, go for a walk, you could uh, play board games. Uh, mm -hmm. When Kate comes to the house, she loves to do crafts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's quality mm -hmm. time for her and me. I watched you with our grandchildren uh, last month when they were at our house. And you went out before they came and you bought some crafts and you sat at the table with them and you didn't just throw them at them and say, here, do it. You got down in with them and, they, and you helped them. And, and, and then, you know, you went down and showed them how to, you made a t-shirt for them on, on your uh, cricket machine that you have. Mm -hmm. and, and you showed them how to do that and, and how to sew and, on the sewing machine and various things like that. Those are quality times that you spend with your kid, right? And, and you know, what this world needs today, there's a, there's a blurring that's happening between genders. And, uh, and so what this world needs today is, is, is moms who are raising their children, especially young girls, to have feminine qualities and to respect femininity. And for men, you're not turning your son into the likeness of you. You're encouraging him to become like his father. I may be old-fashioned, but I'm a believer in, in, in the fact that, that children develop their characters and they develop uh, based upon the relationship that they have with moms. And if your boy, listen up, moms, if your boy is spending all of his time with you and you're teaching him how to cook and how to sew and how, you know, to, to make things and whatnot, uh, and you're teaching him all the feminine things, and then you get surprised a little bit later on when, when he doesn't necessarily turn out to be the type of person that you thought he was going to be, you get my drift. Some of it is a learned behavior. And so what we are calling for as a pastoral couple is for moms to teach their daughters about how to be a good Christian woman. And we're asking dads to, to work with their sons to make sure that they are a positive role model in their life. It's so important to do that. Let's, uh, our time is moving on us here, honey. A yep. uh, person who is positive and encourages. How about that? Okay, our, our kids, we need to, uh, when they do something, praise them up for what they do, even if they don't do a really good job like we think they should do. Like, it, if they do the best they can, then praise them up. Don't tear them down. I remember in my social work days, parents who would become very irate with their children because they got a B minus. Mm -hmm. Now, let me talk to you 
because report card season is coming up. Not every kid is an Einstein. Not every child should go to university. Some children are gifted by the Lord to work with their hands. And there is absolutely zero wrong with manual labor. It is a noble profession, carpentry, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mechanics, uh, uh, electricians, uh, oil field workers, whatever the case may be, these are noble professions. Yeah. But there are some of us that, that we try to force uh, a square peg in a round hole, and we try to force our kids to go to university and to take this. You've got to be, you've got to be a doctor. You've got to be a nurse. You've got to be this. You've got to be that. And we tell our kids that, and this is what we push them to. Yeah. And then it becomes a disaster. So celebrate their individuality. Encourage them. Be positive about their choices. Watch for your kid's aptitude. You know, when I was in grade six, I took a, I took a test. The government gave it to us about what our aptitude was. <laughs> and guess what it turned out my occupation should be? A Roman Catholic sister. <laughs> and I'm going, really? But here's the thing. I had a mother who was always very positive and very encouraging. And even though I never became a Roman Catholic, let alone a Roman Catholic sister, she would find me from time to time stealing my uncle's uh, clergy robes. My uncle was a United Church minister. And I would steal the robes out of his closet and I would go down to the little brook that was by our house and I would baptize the cat and bury the dog. <laughs> and then he would go to church on Sunday and wonder why there's burrs in his robe, right, you know? <laughs> but yeah, you know, but she encouraged that. And, and I know that for her, me being in the ministry is something that's really, really important. Um, here's another quality that, as we get ready to wrap up here, are great, great qualities in a mom, and that's, that's encouraging individuality. Sometimes we look at our first child and say, the second child has got to be just like the first. And for us, AJ was the complete opposite of the first child. And AJ has developed his own personality. He loved noise. And the vacuum cleaner was going, and when the, we wore out the tape of the vacuum cleaner, we, we, we turned the radio on, on static in his crib, so that he would have noise. He would come to the table, sit down to eat, he'd take his fork and knife, and he'd be tapping out a tune, right, you know? Always noise, right, you know? And uh, Shane, so quiet, reserved, even to this very day, Having a conversation with Shane is like this. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Okay. <laughs> how was your week? Good. You got kids like that? Now, if I ask AJ that question, I'm about ready for a 25-minute conversation, so let's get the popcorn and the juice, right? Because we're having a conversation. <laughs> And yet we celebrate their individuality. No two kids are exactly alike. And celebrate <laughs> their individuality. They're different. God made them different. God has ordained them to be different. And celebrate their differences. Healthy lifestyle. Honey, you better take this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can take that one. You're giving it to me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. She's a good cook. Amen. My wife, bless her heart, we've been married 34 years. And for 34 years, she's always encouraged me to eat the right thing. Notice I said encourage me. All right? She wants to go for walks. 
and I go annually. <laughs> annually, I go once a year. <laughs> right? You know. Um, but yeah, I think it's important that we try to live as healthily as possible. Now, we're not vegetarians at our house. That may come as a shock to some of you. But we are what we refer to as flexitarians. And flexitarians, for us, means that we are about 70% vegetarian at home, thereabouts. And uh, we do have some chicken, and we do have you know, some beef occasionally. And there are times that I'm quite happy to have a veggie patty, but there's sometimes my question is, where's the beef, <laughs> right, you know? Um, this is a product, what you're seeing here, of 60 years. Don't, don't blame me. I didn't blame you. <laughs> of my own abuse. There you go. <laughs> and, and, but moms, we play a role. We play a role in keeping the family healthy, making good choices, whatever that would look like for you. Um, another quality here is, is, is self-esteem. And I, I will just speak to this because here's the reality. The woman that you see sitting beside me today and helping me preach would not have done this 34 years ago. She's very shy, didn't think that she could do anything, and I've always come alongside of her and I said, yes, you can, honey, you can do this. And so three weeks ago when I floated the idea, I said, how would you like to team preach with me? I knew right from the get-go that she was all on board with it. She was 100% on board. Is she nervous? Yeah, absolutely. But moms, and parents understand this, that we need to build our children's self-esteem to make them aware that they are capable of doing anything that they set their mind to and, and, and that they are somebody. I have so many people who come to me late in life and sit down and they feel worthless. They feel like they're a nobody. And they have no self-esteem because all their life they've been put down. They've never been celebrated. They've never been encouraged. And we need to be different. Structure and discipline, we already talked about that one. Well, let's, let's wrap up. Here she is. The woman that I married 34 years ago. If you want to know our story, our story is very simple. We met when we were kids. We were both working at the camp. I went away to school. She stayed home. But I made them cookies. But she did send me some cookies once. That's right. Yeah. And uh, how many years later was it? Thirteen. Thirteen years later. You came back to the camp. I came back to the camp having graduated from ministry. And I saw her. And we started this long distant relationship. And I lived in the city of St. John's and she was in another part of the island and so Canada Post made a fortune off us. We have a tickle trunk in our garage that is filled with love letters and cards that we sent back and forth to each other. Until the day came when I said, would you want to go steady? And then she said to her mother, Go ahead, you can say it. He's not tall enough. He's not tall enough. <laughs> and I responded, it is better to have loved and lost a short person than never, never to have loved at all. <laughs> and after a courtship of about a year, we got married. We had our first child. In fact, we were married July the 11th. And um, I was on a business trip in September when I got the phone call. And uh, she told me that she was pregnant. 
And suddenly our lives changed because we had a baby less than 11 months or so after we were married. And life has been a ride for us. And I just want you to know today, those of you that are here, that if you were simply to pattern yourself after what we described to you today, that you could be that type of woman who you would marry all over again and who your kids would be honored to say, that's my mama. And that's the challenge for you today, to live your life in that way that you could be the type of woman that your kids can brag about like the Proverbs 31 woman. I'd marry her all over again. She keeps me laughing like you wouldn't believe. That's okay. You can stop now. I can stop now. <laughs> but, but you know what? Seriously, I love her to death, and I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day, and I've got a little surprise for you. All right? Can you roll it? Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Um, really can't thank you enough for everything you've done over the years for us. Um, you've set an amazing example of a mother, a uh, parent, a role model, and uh, you've been one of our best friends, our biggest supporter, our biggest fan, and uh, I really can't thank you enough um, for all of that. I can't thank you enough for not killing me when I was a kid and filled your gas tank with the hose either, so um, thank you for that one, um, but mom, I think uh, now that I work every day in an industry that sets a gold medal standard, um, I think uh, I owe this one to you, and you deserve a big gold medal. Um, so thank you, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, and hope you have a great day. Hi, Mom. Just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day, and thank you so much for being such a great mom growing up, uh, and how much influence you had on my life. Uh, I didn't realize how hard it was to be a parent and how much effort it takes to keep children fed and clean and all the above. I also didn't realize uh, just how valuable having a great mother would be. And I see it every day now, uh, just how much you helped shape me as a person. And I just wanted to say thank you and I love you and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. And in closing today, let me just say this. All of the things that we've shared today are all positive qualities of a mom, but the greatest gift that a mom could ever give to her children, the greatest legacy that she could ever live to her kids would be that of faith, to be a woman of faith. We have a great God who loves us and cares for us. And he will give you strength that you did not think was possible. In your down days, in the moments when you're exasperated by what your kids have done, in your challenges for the future, having a faith that you can rely on will make all the difference in your life. So stay close to Jesus. God bless you today. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, happy soon-to-be Mother's Day as well. Uh, this is my first time in the church uh, for a while. Um, my grandma passed away in January, and it's been extremely difficult for me, and I've been finding it hard to come back. But this song that I'm about to sing, it's called Lover of My Soul. This song I had on repeat since January, so I thought I'd sing it. Joy. 
Nikita, I know how difficult that must have been for you and the strength that you have inside to be able to do that is a testament to the love of your grandmother and family and friends. I want to thank our worship team this morning for the wonderful service that you've put together. I want to thank you for the uh, lovely meal the brunch that was held downstairs for all the volunteers who helped with that. Thank you so much for what you did. Enjoy this weekend. If your mother is alive, reach out to her. If your mother is deceased, celebrate her. Celebrate the woman that she was, all of the fine qualities that she had, and then use those to move you to do something for someone that your mother would be proud of. Bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the time that you have together. I have a quick announcement to make. Next week, we are going to be addressing uh, the living arrangements with Pauline Dean. And I want to share with you that I will be looking for some men with some pickup trucks for Thursday of next week. Uh, we have some things that we've got to move. And it'll take about two hours of your time. If you are able to help me with that, um, please let me know, get in touch with me, and we'll work out an arrangement and a schedule uh, for you. Let's pray. Father, Thank you for the mothers, for without them we would not be here. Thank you for the love that you planted in their hearts, love for their children, for their husbands, for their church family. And Lord, today I would ask that as we leave this place that we might remember 
that you have called us to be men and women of faith, to walk a different road than the world walks, and to instill within our children all that they need to be successful in life. Help us, O oh God, to do a good job, that we might hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. For we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.